Greetings, Trinity St. Peter's. It is good to be with you all this morning virtually as we continue into the Easter season in this time of shelter in place. Today, I thought that I would try something a little bit different. Uh, we will still have the hymns and our organ, but instead of doing a full morning prayer service, I will be inviting you to pray that in your own homes if you choose. And I'll be offering during this time a sermon, a reflection really on the times that we find ourselves in now and also reading the gospel. So I hope that this will be something edifying for you, something that you uh, find useful on this day. As we move forward into this Easter season, I also want to think outside the box a bit. What would be useful for you during this time? There's so many good things happening in our community that I worry that we're not able to fully see it and appreciate it because we are often so siloed. But as we know, the church is an opportunity to be together, to learn stories that we might otherwise miss. So how can I help you this Easter season? How can I help us learn one another's stories here where Christ is at work in the midst of us? I'll be thinking about that myself, and I invite you to as well please feel free to send me an email, give me a call. Let me know what might work for you this time. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Our gospel reading for this Sunday is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's redeeming work is done. Fought the fight, the battle won. Death in vain forbids him rise. Christ has opened Oh, yeah. 
pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I don't know about you, but this Easter season has indeed felt very different. And I have to say, it isn't just the fact that we weren't able to celebrate in the church. There's something altogether different about it. I find myself as a preacher, and when I think about my own faith life right now, I find myself going back more and more to that first Easter, to that first time encounter. And it was interesting as I listened to a couple of different sermons from across the country, it seems that there is something in the spirit of our church right now that is drawing us back to those early days, that what we have in common with them is this newness unfolding around us, that unlike previous years when we basically knew what the liturgy was going to look like, we basically knew what the music was going to sound like, this year we haven't known what to expect at all. And even as we move forward in this season, even as some of the tumult of things starts to settle. What is left is, as one of my friends put it earlier, a whole new season of our life. That yes, while the storm has ended, we are in fact in a different season, both personally, as a church, and even as a country. And so the questions that we ask in this season by necessity look different than the questions that we asked before. And I've seen a lot of think pieces and a lot of very good ones. And I've also seen our church spending a lot of time trying to figure out what we're allowed to do during this time. Can we consecrate communion over Zoom? And these are important questions. I, I am a priest of the church. I, you know, I agree to obey my bishop and I agree to a certain standard of belief and ritual when I joined the Episcopal Church. And yet I have to be honest with you, I don't really care maybe an unpopular opinion in some circles, but I just find nothing living in that question for me. What is alive for me right now is thinking about who we are becoming, not who we will make ourselves become, but rather who we are actually becoming now, whether we like it or not because things are changing at such a rapid pace, we will never go back to the way we were before. And there is real grief in that. And please do hear me, I mean that. There is real grief in that. Both for me, for our church, and as with any new thing, there is also possibility, hope. None of us knows what is unfolding around us, and yet we feel it unfolding as we live. We are not the ones writing this story of our church. And indeed, it's a reminder that we really never were. As I hear our gospel for this Sunday of Jesus showing up even in a locked room, people who were locked away for fear, fear of change, fear of authority, fear of a world that suddenly seemed to have spiraled out of control, 
Whatever fear it was that brought those particular disciples to that particular place, make no mistake, it was fear that locked the door and it was fear that kept them there. And yet Jesus, the resurrected Lord, shows up even in those spaces. There is no locked door that Jesus cannot transcend. Jesus appears to the disciples and the first words that they are greeted with are words of peace. Peace be with you. And then in this famous passage, Jesus lets the disciples touch his wounds, even coming back again to allow Thomas, who missed it the first time, to place his hand in his side to touch those places of greatest pain, to touch those places that many would try to hide, that shame would say to keep hidden, to keep, keep away. It's from that place that Jesus encounters their fear and transforms it into something different. And I think back to so many of the stories that you all have shared with me. And I think back to when all of this was starting that as we contemplated what it would be like to live through a pandemic, that so many of you looked at me with a quietness and you said, we know. We know what it is to live through a pandemic. This city, our diocese, specifically our church, knows what it is to live through a time of great trauma and grief and pain. And what you all have shown me time and time again is that you found a path through it. Not just a path around it, as so many did, but no, this place, we, you all, the spirit of this place, we found a path through the pain. Standing alongside those who suffered because the difference between the AIDS epidemic and now, as you all have shared with me, is that a lot of people didn't care. Imagine for those of us who didn't come from that time, who perhaps like me weren't aware, weren't old enough to be aware of it. Can we imagine what it would be to be going through what we are now? Except people are deriding you. People don't care about your story. People judge you based on the choices that you make or who you are. Imagine going through something this disruptive, this traumatic, this frightening, and having the world not care. And siblings of Christ, siblings in Christ at Trinity St. Peter's, that is one of the things that you have taught me. Someone who didn't go through that. Your lives, your faith is a witness to what is possible, to the resiliency of people and community and faith. And so as we look at this Easter season, I go back to our gospel story. 
that as Jesus moves past fear, it is with Jesus's very wounds that he invites the disciples to contemplate new life. That it is not in spite of the story of this city, of our church, of this place, but because of it, that we know we are resilient enough, flexible enough, innovative enough to weather even this season as it unfolds around us. And so I don't know what it will look like. If I did, I would write one of those think pieces about it. But what I do know is I know your spirit. I know our community, our spirit, our faith, our joy. Our joy not in a Pollyanna sense that we aren't dealing with what's happening, but our joy in the midst of the suffering. That even at the grave, we make our Alleluia. And so you all, your stories, the ways in which you have let me reach out and touch that which is so real and raw, sensitive and true. Those are the places in this Easter season that I find myself going again and again to find resiliency, to find that faith, that hope in going forward. And so as we move forward, I want us to rethink the ways in which we're using Sunday mornings during this time of great change. What do we need to weather this time and not just weather it, but to thrive? What does our community need right now? And the questions are different. The questions are by their necessity different than they were before this all happened. And that is the invitation of Easter. That is the invitation of this season for us. We are different people because that is what resurrection does. As my friend said in her sermon, love resurrects and comes back even stronger. And for me, that is hope. And that is what I see within this community, within this place. Love that is resurrected that is coming back even stronger than it was before. God is not done with us yet. The Easter season continues on. Easter continues until the end of May. And this unfolding season will open up for us new things that perhaps we never considered or thought of before. New ways of being community, of loving one another, of being present with one another, even if we can't be physically present. I want to read you a portion of Christian Wyman's book, My Bright Abyss. It is a beautiful book that has been a great solace for me during this time. Wyman writes, a deeper truth though, one that scripture suggests when it speaks of the eternal word being made specific flesh, is that there is no permutation of humanity in which Christ is not present. If every Bible is lost, 
if every church crumbles to dust, if the last believer in the last prayer opens her eyes and lets it all finally go, Christ will appear on this earth as calmly and casually as he appeared to the disciples walking to Emmaus after his death who did not recognize this man to whom they had pledged their very lives. This man whom they had seen beaten, crucified, abandoned by God. This man who, after walking the dusty road with them, after sharing an ordinary meal and discussing the scriptures, had to vanish once more in order to make them see. Even if the last believer utters the last prayer and finally lets it all go, Christ will still show up just as casually as on a dusty road, waiting to have a meal with his friends, to greet them in the dawn of a new day. And this is good news indeed for me. That while we all have a part to play in this, it is not up to any one of us to hold the faith, to, through our holding of it, keep it real. That God is God, and that God is at work as God always has been at work with us, with our church, with our world. We are not the ones writing this story. And it might be easier in the moment if we were. It would certainly feel like we had a bit more control. But something new is bursting forth can feel it. And I await it. And I await it with you. I wait for it knowing where we have been, where we are now, and in the hope of where we are headed next. But what I know and what I have seen affirmed time and time again ever since this pandemic began. We are the body of Christ. We are a community united by love. We are a community that strives, that listens, and that knows how to walk through suffering with love, and with patience, and with great resiliency. My siblings in Christ, my prayers are with you. My love is with you. Amen. Alleluia. At Easter day with joy was bright, the sun shone out with fairer light. When to their longing eyes restored, the apostles saw their risen Lord. His risen flesh with radiance glowed, his wounded hands and feet were shored. Those scars the solemn witness gave that Christ was risen from the grave. O Jesus, King of gentleness, do thou thyself our hearts possess that we might give thee all thy days with willing tribute of our praise. O Lord of all, with us abide in this our joyful Easter tide from every weapon.
heaven death can wield thine own redeemed for ever shield all praise o risen lord we give to thee who dead again dost live to god the father equal praise and god the holy ghost we raise <laughs> 